How to buy a home when you have one to sell. Somewhat complicated process with all kinds of downsides if you don't do it right. Moving twice, stuff in storage, double mortgage payments. Nobody wants that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Buying a home when you have one to sell. What is up, everybody? Mike Ferrante here with Century 21 Homestar and the 21 Mike team. We serve Northeast Ohio, Cleveland, Akron, Canton, all the way down to Columbus. So pretty much... Uh, Central Ohio, all the way up to the Northeast quadrant of Ohio, hit us up, go to 21mike.com and click that button right at the top to schedule an appointment with me or someone on the team. We do this training every Tuesday, Tony. Every single Tuesday, we are here devoting ourselves, dedicating our time so that agents and buyers and sellers can have a better experience when they work. And Tony, of course, is Tony Geraci, broker owner of Homestar. What is up, Tony? A lot of work every day, always people buying and selling. It's well, never stopped. <laughs> yeah, and Tony, this is, this, is, this is what you do. I mean, this is like the essence of your being is helping people uh, with uh, real estate uh, pretty much 23 and a half hours a day. I think you are a robot. And for 30 minutes a day, you have to plug into the wall to recharge your batteries. Well, I love what I do. That's, uh, you know, that's everything that uh, everybody wants for when they have uh, work. Not, not to say if I won the lottery, I would still do this. I still oversee everything, I promise, but <laughs> I don't play the lottery, so I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, you might work 23 hours instead of 23 and a half. Uh, but if you want to talk real estate with Tony, the best way is talktony.net. Is that right? Tony Talk. Tony Talk. <laughs> almost. Tony Talk. <laughs> TonyTalk.net. Yeah, I keep screwing that up, but that is the best way to get on Tony's calendar. So if you are an agent curious about what it looks like to work at Homestar, or if you just want to talk real estate, I mean, this, like we just said, Tony really lives for this. And, and that's what he dedicates his time to is helping people in real estate. So uh, that's how you get a hold of us. And guys, if you are here for training, you came to the right place because we haven't talked about this in a while, Tony, but especially in a seller's market, buying a home when you have one to sell is tricky. So hopefully we have some buyers tuning in, sellers, this will be great for you because you need to understand the process, You know what it means to take a contingent offer, for example. And then of course, for our agents, our agents really need to understand how to navigate this on behalf of our clients. Because if we're not explaining it right, they're gonna be lost, maybe angry with us. So Tony, what I wanted to start with is just sort of a quick list of the problems, the issues, the challenges that come up with buying when you have a home to sell. And, and I started my list with, hey, if the timing doesn't work out, you're moving twice, you know, maybe moving into temporary housing uh, if, you, if your home sells and then you don't have one identified. But there's a whole list of issues and challenges. So Tony, just spitball with me here and, and help me come up with this list of problems and challenges when this happens. Oh, sure. Well, uh, number one, they're worried about being homeless. <laughs> That's number one. Uh, two, they always, uh, when buyers are buying a house and have a house to sell, they're always assuming the next buyer is going to be just like them, which most people are trying to buy and move into a house as soon as possible. Uh, there's other, they don't realize, you know, because they haven't sold the house in a long time. Uh, they don't realize there's all different kinds of buyers out there that are in different situations that have to move now, don't have to move, could rent back, could find, they could find temporary housing. Uh, and you never know into that. But I always suggest, I mean, not to jump the gun is, uh, is to sell first and then buy. Uh, and then listen to the sellers when I bring that up, listen to their what what they're concerned about and just going line item by line of all the concerns and and make them feel more secure about that decision. Yeah. And that whole being homeless thing, that's a phrase that we've heard a lot. You know, it's kind of um, a hyperbole. Oh, I'm going to be homeless. But seriously, like if if you don't have things lined up right, your home sells, you don't have a place to go. And that's when you start looking at options like staying with family, uh, temporary housing, and that whole moving twice is, is a real pain. You know, the other alternative, if it, you are able to uh, afford two house payments, is you can buy first and then sell your existing home. But a lot of people, even if they can afford it, they don't want to. People don't want to make double payments, right, Tony? I mean, it's a, it's a fact of life. Oh, definitely. And don't see too many of that right now. Well, it depends. I've seen a few just 
But uh, when you have two experienced agents on two sides, you can make it work or that have been through this scenario. So I, I, at least once or twice a week, I'm on the phone with an agent with this exact scenario on different sides, trying to give them uh, some suggestions. But example, when you buy, tell a seller or a buyer, they're buying and they have to sell. When you buy a house contingent on you selling a house, you don't buy that house until you sell. Same thing in reverse buy a new you've put your house on the market it's contingent you on finding a new house if you don't find a new house the, the deal doesn't go through well what buyer would want that same thing what seller would want to take your offer uh when you're contingent same thing they want you all the other terms are great same with a buyer a buyer might come in and wait because your house this is a house they want the price they want and they'll wait they might be renting month to month they might be living with family especially in that first time home buyer price range you could it's a more a bigger chance of finding a first time home buyer that's living at family or month to month or renting things like that that they already they don't even own a house so they know they could, there's they have options. Yeah. So Tony, let's go down that path because that's something I wanted to take a few minutes on is, you know, we often in our business throw around, around lingo and acronyms and some people don't understand what it is. So I do want to talk about the contingent offer. So let me set the table. Right now it's a seller's market. Uh, you painted a scenario where, oh, you've got a buyer who's renting or staying with their family, or maybe it's their first home and they're living with their parents still. They have a leg up in a seller's market because they have ultimate flexibility and the seller may say, wow, I really like this offer, even though it might not be the highest, they can work with my dates. There, there's no pressure to move. Uh, maybe I can even close and rent back, which of course, you know, Tony, you mentioned that. And in order to win in multiple offers, sometimes that's what we're doing. As a buyer, we make an offer and I say, Tony, I want to buy your house, but you know what? I'm going to give you three weeks to move out after closing to help you with your move and you'll have the funds and do what you have to do. And that makes my offer more appealing. But if I've got a home to sell, you know, that's where I end up homeless. So I can't always do that. In a seller's market, we have something, uh, we have these contingent offers and they're not very appealing. So I do want to explain a contingent offer, Tony, so that everyone understands what it means. But I also want to talk about why it's not all that appealing sometimes to a seller. Um, so let me give my definition, and then I want you to kind of elaborate on it, Tony. So basically, it's, hey, Tony, I want to buy your house, but it's contingent on me selling my house. In other words, I want to make your, I want to make an offer, but I can't really solidify my contract until my house sells. Well, as you can imagine, as a seller, that's not all that appealing. Go ahead, right, and right. And then example, what I would say to a seller now. If before we get in there, buyer that has to sell before, if we get into, and I, I use this term lightly, an experienced agent, if you, there's a larger possibility if you get an experienced agent on the other side, they're going to want to do their research because I have agents all the time. What's our listing? Oh, it's contingent on sale of their house. I go, what? What's what? where's their house? I don't know. How much are they listed for? I don't know. What's the market like in there? So the buy the listing agent on the, the first house when you have a house sell is doing the whole research on how how uh, their house they're selling, how fast it will sell, what price they are. And sometimes they tell you, if you example, so I tell a seller, if, if you know, sorry, this is confusing, is that if you buy before you sell, sometimes that listing agent, that seller is going to dictate how fast you have to sell your house and what price, because you don't have time to get the price you want. So if your house is like, you know, the, the listing agent thinks ah, that house is worth 400,000 and then their agent says, well, we're going to list it for 450. I'm like, well, we're not going to take your offer. Contingent sell, you're overpriced. So some agents don't do the research on the other thing. So I tell sellers, you're going to get controlled a little bit if you get an experienced agent on this side. We're not just going to go, okay, list your house, see if you find a buyer. We're going to say, what are you listing it for? What, you know, and, and research your house, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and Tony, let's kind of go through the different qualities of contingencies because there's there's the worst contingency, which is Tony, I want to buy your house. I need my house to sell first. It's contingent on my house selling, but it's not even on the market yet. That's the worst one. So if you have buyers coming to you saying, I want to start looking at houses and I have a house to sell and it's not even on the market yet. The first conversation is, well, hey, let's talk about selling your house and at least getting it on the market. Right, right, Tony? That's step one. 
Exactly. Exactly. And then also yeah. having the experienced agent that you're working with, because if I'm a listing agent on the other side, say, tell me something about it. Like, oh yeah, we it's contingent on selling my house, but we've already researched it. I got the house ready to list. It's going to list it in any day. We're priced right. The houses are selling within a week in this area. You have to sell that. And if you have a good experienced agent on one side, telling that to the listing agent, make them feel comfortable. So I don't know if I elaborate or that was the next point. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Next step up is, hey, at least we're on the market. So it's contingent on my house selling. We're on the market and you might even have some information about, oh yeah, we've already got five showings tomorrow and, and six more this, this weekend. And the more information the buyer's agent can provide, the stronger that contingency appears. Still not very compelling though, right, Tony? Sellers are going to say, well, talk to me when you got an offer or when it's under contract, right? Right. And trying to go into those, uh, the uh, trying to buy a home that's just came on the market, they're getting lots of showings, it's hard to go in there right away. Now, a house that's been sitting a while, better chance, but, but you got to have all your ducks in a row uh, and objection handling if you're going to a listing that just came on the market. Yeah. Now, of course, I'm talking the buyer's house here. So I'm the buyer. <clears throat> Worst one is home's not even on the market yet. Next best is my home is on the market and it's contingent on it selling. The next best thing is, hey, Tony, I want to buy your house. Not only is my house on the market, but it's under contract, meaning we've accepted an offer. That's a step better. Still not great because contingencies aren't great in this market. But at least if I can say, Tony, I'm, I'm under contract. Now, of course, if a good listing agent is on the other side, they're going to ask a series of questions, right, Tony? You're yeah. under contract, but... Yeah, no. So... You got the first one over here, middle one over here. And now you got the experienced agent at the end house. They're going to call that. They're going to call that lender of that buyer, make sure they're pre-qualified. They're in good standing because we're over here. Uh, you know, so it's at it all. You got to make sure you're, you're selling that buyer, even though you're under contract. It's a great buyer. They're pre-approved. They're with this bank, yep. you know, the, all of that. Yeah. And, and a good listing agent is going to ask about contingencies too. So there's contingencies on the other side. So inspection, financing, they're going to say, great, your home's under contract, but have you had inspections yet? You know, what if the deal could fall apart tomorrow because there's a terrible inspection? That doesn't make that seller feel very, very confident in taking my contingent offer. Where are you with financing? Has the appraisal been done yet? So the best home sale contingency I can offer if I'm the buyer trying to buy Tony's house is on the market, under contract, past contingencies, just waiting for final loan approval and closing. That's a pretty strong contingency. That's as good as it gets. And the seller just has to feel confident. Like Tony, if, Tony, if Tony's going to sell, sell me his house under that contingency, he just has to feel confident that all we're waiting for is that money to hit escrow and for me to be able to buy his house. Pretty strong contingency, but still still not the best. Definitely. And then just watching the timeline, because uh, I use this term lightly, uh, time kills. You know, time never makes things better. So the longer you stretch things out, things can happen. So always watch your timeline. Because I just had that today. Someone was building a house, contingent on selling their house. But the the our buyers are buying a house, contingent on them built their house being built. Who knows? Well, they want to be in by November. Who knows if it's going to be done by November? There's delays and all of that. So you always got to be, you know, watch the timeline. Yeah, a couple of good things in the chat that we'll hit uh, after we're done recording here. Uh, but yeah, uh, following those dates and, you know, the home stays on the market potentially too. So, you know, I might get a contingent offer accepted on Tony's house, but here in our MLS, it goes to a status where Tony could still be having showings and potentially take another offer. Now, a lot of times there's a time frame where I can perform or not. Uh, but still, a contingent offer is not the best place to be. But you have to be able to talk through that option with your buyers if they have a home to sell. Now, Tony, let's put the contingency aside. We made it people and did confuse them. Complicated. That's why it's so important for agents to really be able to explain the contingency. Now, the next the next best scenario is that everything just times up perfectly and the dates fall in place and you move from point A to point B if you have a home to sell. But that doesn't always happen. And that's where we start getting into the temporary housing situations, staying with friends or family or, or, or renting a short-term rental. 
I think as agents, you should have some of those thoughts ready because how great is that? What a great service to be able to offer to your clients to, to say, look, if you work with me, when you work with me, these are some things I have in place for my clients. Like for, I'll give you an example, Tony. There's a condo complex right near me called the Lakes of Aurora and they do three and six month rentals. And we get our clients lined up and they feel confident that even if there's, even if the dates don't line up, and they have to get out of their house to wait for the closing on their next house, I've got a plan for them. So there's there's things like that we can do as agents. No, that's great. You got to be ready for any contingency and, and prep them for different situations without scaring them. You know, like this is worst case scenario. This is best case scenario because they never want to get in a situation. Like you didn't tell me that could be a possibility. Like example, like another one I had about a week ago is that they're like, oh, they, the, the, the sellers and the buyers are just deciding, should we wait three months and then close or close now? Well, if I'm on the buyer side or, or, or doesn't or seller side is that you never know what could happen if you're on the seller side, the buyer, something could happen. They could lose their job. I always say this, and I hopefully you, I know you'll agree with this. There's no such thing as a final loan approval. There's no, <laughs> say it again. There's no such thing as a final loan approval. We've had people get denied the morning of closing because the lender found out they changed jobs and they thought, oh, it's okay. I could change jobs because I'm approved and they killed the deal. There's no such thing. So I know there's agents now that have been in the business 30 years. And like, I've never had a problem. I got this, uh, this thing over here that's this piece of paper that says a loan commitment. It's good forever. No, it's not. So time, it could happen. Something could happen to a buyer. Something could happen to a seller. I've, we've had is the deaths. We've had sicknesses. We had loss of jobs. And so you always got to explain that to your buyers and sellers of situations. The longer you wait, something could happen that it's not that uh, someone wanted that to happen, but it could be in a bad situation. Yep. That's great uh, tip, Tony. We're here dispelling myths because I've had that conversation with agents. Oh no, final loan approval. That's a thing that happens. No, not really. Final loan approval happens when the property transfers because up until transfer, anything could happen. Someone could drop over dead. Like you said, a uh, plane crash, bus hit by a bus. I mean, hate to be morbid, but <laughs> these things have happened, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm, unfortunately, I've, I've had that happen. So not a plane well, crash, though. Not going to Yeah. Well, hopefully not that. But uh, all right. So, Tony, last thing I wanted to hit on, and we won't spend much time on this, but on our team, we have a proprietary product that we offer. And there are different companies out there that will help with this. It's called a power buyer program where, Tony, if you're my buyer and you have a home to sell, there are programs in place like ours that will guarantee you the money to perform so you don't have to make an offer with a home sale contingency. So I don't want to go into great depth on that. If you're an agent here in Ohio and you want to hear more about it, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Just go to 21mike.com or hit me up directly, mike at 21mike.com. Um, or look into the companies that will help you with this. Because especially in a strong seller's market, contingent offers won't get accepted. And if you have options to offer your buyers where they can be at what's called a power buyer, where they don't have to have a contingency, yes, there are costs involved with it, but would you rather pay some costs or would you have to go way over list price to win in multiple offers? So I'm just going to leave that out there kind of as a teaser, Tony. I don't know if you've seen any of the power buyer programs out there uh, but it's something that every agent should look into. And if you're a buyer with a home to sell, definitely talk to your agent about it. Oh, yes. No, I've seen plenty of those. I always suggest to our buyers slash sellers, at least try to put your house on the market and see if you find a buyer that'll meet your, uh, your contingency of finding a house. And if you don't, then that my opinion, that's the second, that's the next step. You know, just ju don't just jump into that, my opinion. Yep. Yep. Great stuff today, Tony. As always, thank you for being here. I'm going to hang out for a few minutes after because we had some excellent comments and questions. And of course, uh, come back every Tuesday for training. And if you miss it, if you're watching on YouTube, smash that subscribe button, follow us on Facebook. And of course, uh, you can get the audio on our podcast, Free Beer and Real Estate. Doesn't that sound great, Tony? Sounds good. Delicious. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here. See you next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.